This right here, you guys, is the Seven Artisans 85mm T2 Spectrum Cine Lens. And for the last maybe month and a half, I have been shooting both video as well as stills with this lens. And after putting it through various different lighting situations, nighttime shoots, daytime portraits, and video, I finally have a conclusion on what I think about the Seven Artisans Cinema Lens. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. What's going on YouTube man? Welcome back to yet another King James episode and today folks like we mentioned we are going to be talking about the 85mm Spectrum Cine Lens from Seven Artisans. Now a couple of months ago Seven Artisans did reach out and ask me if I wanted to try their Cine Lenses out and so they had a 35, a 50 and an 85 and of course you guys I picked the 85 because the 85mm is one of my favorite focal lengths for both video and photo. Now they're not paying me to say anything good about this lens, they are purely sending this over for me to make a review on and I'm going to be sharing my honest thoughts, the good as well as the bad, on what I think about this little lens. All right, so the first thing that I want to talk about is the build quality. This lens looks extremely expensive. It looks like one of those Cine lenses or like an L-series lens. It definitely looks premium. Now, even though it looks premium, you guys, on top of that, it also feels premium. This lens is a solid metal construction. On the very bottom here, it has a full metal lens mount. Um, it also has geared aperture and focus rings, which are clickless on the aperture ring here, um, as you guys can see, because again, this is a cinema lens. You know, personally for me, I just found it really, really comfortable to kind of focus and adjust aperture because of kind of that ribbed feeling on the focus ring. It provides a little bit more of an extra grip than it would with something like, you know, kind of like a rubber or smooth grip. This is a T2 aperture, max aperture lens, um, and it has nine elements in eight groups with 10 iris blades. The lens comes also with a metal lens cap right here, and it almost has sort of like a built-in hood. I don't know if you guys can see that, but the lens is recessed within this metal hood up at the top here. Now look at that beautiful front element, you guys. This lens has an 82 millimeter filter thread. So this is, I think, standard across the 50 as well as the 35 from the same Cine line. And before we get into the image quality and just my experience on shooting the lens, I wanna talk about the minimum focusing distance because the minimum focusing distance for this is two and a half feet. And with an 85 millimeter lens, that is actually pretty solid. So whether you are shooting stills or if you are doing video, you can pretty much isolate any of your subjects opening this thing up wide open and you're going to get some really, really fun results. All right, you guys, so before we move on with the Seven Artisans lens, I want to give a huge thank you and shout out to our sponsor for this episode, the good folks over at Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Now, one thing every photographer should have in the new year is your own dedicated website. Now, luckily, Squarespace makes it super simple with award-winning templates you can use to get started within minutes, an e-commerce shop, as well as a dedicated portfolio page. And probably one of my newest favorite features, the appointment schedule and tab where clients can see what times you are available for booking. So if you guys want to get started today, head over to squarespace.com slash kingjapes and enter promo code kingjapes at checkout and you guys can receive 10% off of your first purchase of a domain or a website. Huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. So now I want to talk about the performance and image quality of this lens. So first things first, you guys, in terms of videography, what this lens was made for, I have to say on the Sony a7 III, it feels amazing. Now, of course, there are no electronics inside of this lens. Even the aperture is manually controlled here with the aperture ring. And so in your camera, you're not gonna have any settings for autofocus or adjusting your aperture directly through the camera. The focusing on this lens is actually extremely smooth. But one thing that you have to note is that the focus pool is actually really long. I am not sure the exact specifications on how long it is, but it definitely takes a couple of turns to get from close focus 
to infinity. Personally, where I find this to be difficult is when you're shooting handheld and you don't have a stabilizer or anything like that. When you are shooting video and you want to achieve that really smooth focus pull, you might need to be locked in to a tripod of some sort or something to stabilize uh, just so that the images and video doesn't look shaky. Even with IBIS inside of the a7 III, there was still a lot of shake coming because I was trying to adjust focus. This lens performs really well in the daylight as well as in the nighttime. So in terms of videography, you guys, like I said, with my limited knowledge, I absolutely loved shooting with this lens. I used it primarily for establishing shots uh, to kind of compress and then bring out some more finer details in my surroundings. So, and even though this thing has some heft to it, it's pretty heavy, it never really made my a7 III feel unbalanced. But I will say it can get extremely tiring if this is the only lens that you're shooting with the entire time. Now the next thing that I wanna talk about is the performance for photography. And I think a lot of people might get confused with how Seven Artisans branded this being a cine lens because at the end of the day, yeah, it was made for videographers, but it still performs extremely, extremely well for photo. At the end of the day, this is an 85 millimeter T2 lens. So you're going to get shallow depth of field for days. You're gonna get bokeh. And I'm gonna talk all about that here with some sample photos. Now, I took this lens out for a couple of different shoots. I shot it, again, like I said, for video in the park, but I also took this lens out for a portrait shoot. So the portrait shoot went pretty well. And the images that I got from it, shooting a small group and family were amazing. At T2, it can be a little bit soft, just because that is the most shallow depth of field that the lens opens up to. This is a really good value for portrait photographers who are looking for a lens that not only can be great for video, but can also be equally as great for stills. Honestly, you guys, this lens has made it into my photography kit, and this is the one that I have been taking with me on my shoots. I never would have thought I would go for a manual focus 85 millimeter lens, but this is the lens that changed my mind. With the focus being so smooth, and then you know using things like focus peaking inside of the Sony bodies, it makes shooting manual focus a blast. I even used this lens for some nighttime street photography, and those images turned out pretty great as well. So if you're a photographer, man, try out the Cine lens from Seven Artisans. So overall, you guys, in regards to photography, I am extremely impressed with this thing. The build quality, the overall image quality as well, it is a very, very solid lens. Personally, I think Seven Artisans, if they were to incorporate some type of electronics within here, just to be able to have a connection for aperture, that would be absolutely game-changing. But at the end of the day, you guys, this is a $450 cinema lens that provides you with amazing image quality, a max T2 aperture, minimum focus distance of two and a half feet, some insane looking bokeh, some nice background separation. You guys, in my opinion, Seven Artisans knocked it out of the park with the 85 millimeter spectrum cine lens. So this is a lens that I would highly, highly recommend for someone like me who does a little bit of video and photo. And if you are a photographer and you are afraid of the cine branded lenses, definitely do your best to try to try it out in person or, you know, just go for it. I think this is a lens that if you are a photographer and you're used to shooting manual focus lenses, it's going to be really good to you and you are going to love it. So that's gonna wrap it up, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of this lens and if you guys want me to review any of the other seven artisans cine lenses let me know in the comment section down below we'll try to get that done for you but that's gonna wrap it up for me i'll see you guys in the next one as always minute game